guys, Annabelle here from Horizon Cosplay and today we're going to be trying something brand new, making a historically accurate Disney princess. Our chosen subject for this experiment? Well, Megra from Hercules. And don't go arguing that that hard ass, sweet talking woman is not a Disney princess because she 110% is and is in fact one of my favourite. In fact, the only Disney princess she comes second to in my opinion is Tiana and that's just because Tiana has a job. I mean, Megra kind of has a job for Hades, but it's almost like forced unpaid servitude, which is slavery? Megra's a slave? Wow, things just got awkward quickly. Anyway, we're not here to discuss the finer details of the Hercules movie, sequel, TV series, or well-received video game. No, 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 no. We are here to discuss the finer details of how to turn this into a historically accurate dress. This historically accurate dress we are going to be creating is known as a, and if I get this wrong people, please don't kill me, Pepopolis. Pepolis. Maybe Pepolis? Pepopolis? Pepolis? We're going to go with Pepolis. It's known as a Pepolis. And we're going to be creating this using nothing more than an old bedsheet. Maybe two if we get creative. Now I am going to say outright, please do take my historical accurate declaration with a small pinch of salt. I honestly don't know if purple dye was available in ancient Greece, and even if it was, I can tell you right now that most Pepolis were actually white. So think of it this way. We're aiming for the right shape, using the Disney color. And because of this, no complaints in the comments, please. Though do feel free to leave as many compliments or questions as you like. Now listen closely because I'm going to be giving you some very detailed instructions on how to make this incredibly complicated garment. First, find a bed sheet in your desired color. Decide that you do not need to cut it up and then immediately change your mind when you remember that you're short. To check the size, fold the fabric widthwise in half and hold one point to your shoulder and the other arm outright. The fabric should go to your outright arm's wrist. Mine's a little longer as I didn't want to hem the extra edges. Now, you need to make sure you have enough room to fold over your top half so don't take too much fabric off the bottom. So, not too short, not too long, but as Snow White says, you want it just right. Wait, that's Red Riding Hood. Wrong cottage in the woods. Has Disney even adapted that? Because if not, they definitely should. Who am I freaking kidding? Of course they have. Anyway, historical fun fact here. Young girls wore Pippopolis with long overfolds, so they didn't grow out of them, or at least not so quickly. So, you know, they didn't have to weave a whole new one every year because no doubt that would have been rather time consuming and considerably expensive. And of course, who wants to spend money on their kids? Then again, in ancient Greece, the kids likely paid for themselves. Ah, those days of child labor. Then, taking your raw edge, it's time to add some decoration. Personally, as Megra had a belt and hairpiece of dark purple, I decided to add a dark purple stripe here with some nice embroidery. Done on my machine, of course, because though we are going for an ancient Greek look, we have no need to use that dreaded time-consuming ancient technique, otherwise known as hand stitching. Once that's all done, remember to hem those raw edges to prevent it from fraying and leaving you looking like a colourful Greek peasant rather than a princess. I also cut an extra long stripe of dark purple that I could wrap around my waist to use as a belt. I did this because, well, hello, they're historically accurate and Disney princess and the aim here is to combine both and we are winning at that challenge so far. Anyway, once the fabric was sorted I tried it on my dressmaker's dummy only to realise I had nothing to pin the fabric with except some very unappealing bobby pins. So giving my 3D printer a break from my Etsy shop orders we printed out three spiral things that look similar to Megara's brooches in the movie. Then because they were blue we had to make them gold. I tried using a gold primer but it came out a pale brown, the colour of malnourished poo if I'm totally honest so I broke out my good paints instead and gave it a fancy paint job with plenty a sparkle, only to realise I'd done them in the wrong colour and have to redo the paint job completely. There, much better. Then, because we had to attach these somehow, I got those boring bobby pins and super glued them to the back of those fancy painted spirals, now known as brooches. Right, that's it, you're done, so let's put this giant rectangle on. First, fold your rectangle so the top third, hemmed by the decorative side, is laying under the other two thirds. Then fold it in half vertically and step into it. After a few tries and failed, I found this was a lot easier to put on when I was laying on the floor. The easy way of getting dressed. And yes, I'm wearing a modern bra because I don't want YouTube banning this video because oops, my nipple slipped. That would just be awkward. For everybody. Then take your pins and pin at the shoulders so they are comfy. Are you concerned about that big slit up the side? That's okay. Get your belt and last remaining brooch and pin it on to keep it shut. I intentionally made my belt too long, so I also wrapped it a few times around my waist just for extra security. Now, while we admire this feat of engineering, let's have a little more history. Perpopolis were worn by Greek women during the early Archaic, Classical, and Hellenistic periods, 
which for us uneducated people, that's between 500 BC and 300 CE, which is 800 years in total. I wish things stayed in fashion that long these days. It consisted of a large rectangular piece of material folded vertically and hung from the shoulders, with a broad overfold. Most of the time, for adult women, it was belted under the overfold, but younger girls who were growing into the garment, or sometimes women who just preferred long overfolds, would replace the belt on top of the overfold instead. The best illustrations of these are often seen on the statues of Athena, Greek goddess of love. Whether that's to imply how young she looks or to show off her figure, I'm not 100% sure. Also, if you guys wanted to try this for yourself, you can always shorten it and use two pieces of fabric, one for the front and one for the back instead. This was a fashion of Spartan women, and because of the amount of thigh they were known to show, they were often called, yeah, no idea how to pronounce that, they were called this word, which means thigh shower. They also continued to wear papopolis even after it fell out of fashion with most Greeks, so this could even be considered a very modern traditional look. All right, guys, that is it for today. I do hope you like my little creation. To be quite honest, I love this. I was actually thinking of cutting it up to make into an actual Maker cosplay, but honestly, I think I look good in this. I think I'm going to keep it. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe because next Wednesday I have something rather exciting going on and I don't want you to miss it. Otherwise, guys, please feel free to leave any comments or questions down below and I will do my best to answer every single one. I hope you guys have an absolutely beautiful day and I will be seeing you next Wednesday. Day. Bye!